Hello, this is Wicked Shrapnel, and I have lost 91 pounds in less than a year on the carnivore diet. And I've posted, uh, I don't know, Facebook and Instagram posts, you know, detailing like how much weight that I've lost. And I've had a lot of people ask me, like, how do you do it? What's the actual process? What are you doing? And it's very simple. You just eat animal products and only animal products. <laughs> nothing else so what is that so you could eat like any any animal but i find that the the best is beef and a lot of people who uh promoted the carnivore diet like dr ken berry he's a good one uh dr sean baker it's another good one they both have youtube channels and they go into depth on all the different research all the the background nutritional differences between you know all the different kinds of animals and things like that and so primarily you should be eating like ruminant animals and ruminant animals are like cows sheep like the animals that eat grass and they have like four stomachs and can really extract all the nutrients out of plants and and that all goes into their muscles, which you eat, and their muscles and their fats. And so ruminant animals, I guess, have the best uh, nutrient dense meats that are best for this carnivore diet. So lamb and beef, I would say, like are the best. And I just never really, I tried lamb, I bought a leg of lamb, I cooked it. I think you have to cook it a certain way. It just, it doesn't taste that great to me. But if you like lamb, that'd be a great one to eat. And it is cheaper than beef. So if you like it, I'd recommend eating it. But then beef, you want, you want fatty beef. So if you're buying like the ground beef, uh, like the 80, 80% 80 fat or even, uh, what is it? Well, they, they measure it lean. It's like 80% lean, 70% lean. So as the lower the lean value that you can get, the better. And that is the cheaper meats or ground beef. So like the 93, 95% lean ground beef is usually cost more. And you want the, the least lean because you want the fats with a, so the carnivore diet is kind of, it's just a more extreme version of the keto diet. And with the keto diet, they, they usually say like 70% of your calories from fat and like 25% from protein and then 5% from carbs. And then carnivore diets, just trying to get rid of that 5% of carbs. You want to get to close to zero carbs as possible. So it would more be like 75% fat and 25% protein and you can use calculators like chronometer is the one that I used and it's free to use and you could enter all the foods that you have in there and it gives you a breakdown of like how much fat what percentage of fat what percentage of protein and a target for protein is uh, try to target in grams what your goal weight is so if my goal weight is 200 pounds then I would try to eat 200 grams of protein a day. And, and that, that helps maintain like your muscle mass and everything. You don't want to start eating away at your muscle. You want to just primarily eat away at your fat stores. And so getting, getting into as close to zero carbs as you can get, that gets your body into ketosis which your body normally uses glucose as its primary fuel and those come from carbohydrates and in the american diet we eat way more carbohydrates than most of us will ever burn in a day if you're very active you're out running marathons you're you know extreme exercise and you can burn off all those carbs then you're probably not looking for a diet anyway and the people that have ate way too many carbs than they burn and have gained a lot of weight and are fat, obese, morbidly obese. I was up to 350 pounds and I didn't feel very good. I was definitely eating way more carbs than I was burning 
I, I work a desk job now, I work from home. I don't even have to walk to my car and walk to the office to go sit at a desk anymore. I just have to stay in my house. So, especially when that all started back in the beginning of 2020, I gained a lot of weight. Just, I wasn't moving barely at all. And I was actually eating worse food because I was doing the DoorDash, I was doing the Uber Eats from all the fast food places and tons of carbs, sodas, Sodas are really bad. High fructose corn syrup is one of the worst things that you can put in your body, in my opinion. And there's a lot of studies to back that up, especially uh, with uh, in relation to obesity. Sugars are bad. You gotta get rid of sugars like almost completely if you really want to lose weight and keep it off. So, um, but this eliminates all breads, all vegetables, everything. So the main things that I eat are steak and when you with steak, just like the ground beef, you want the fattiest cuts, which would be like a ribeye. Ribeye is probably the best cut of steak that you can get for the carnivore diet. The next best would probably be a New York strip, and then uh, like a T-bone or a porterhouse. The, that is like a New York strip with a fillet on it. Those are that's what the combined is. One side of the T-bone is a New York strip, and the other side's a fillet. And so those are fine too, but. Um, I think the ribeye, if, if you can afford eating a, a prime ribeye every day, then that's your best option there. Or even some Wagyu, that's like super fatty. <laughs> but just a regular, I was eating just like select level bone in ribeyes, which I was getting for like $6.99 a pound, sometimes even $5.99 a pound. Or New York strips, same thing. So you can find like deals at your grocery stores and sometimes find that. But I mean, those really don't taste as good as a, a choice or prime level cut, which are gonna be more. So choice is probably more around like 10 to $12 a pound. And then prime, you're looking at like 15 to $20 a pound. And that, that's all just about the amount of marbling that's actually in the meat. And it does make it you know, more tender and juicy and delicious. So, but I mean, even a, the lowest grade select level ribeye is gonna have a lot more fat and marbling on it than if you get um, like a sirloin. Sirloin will be like a, a really lean cut. So even a prime sirloin, which is supposed to have the most fat marbling and everything is less fatty than a, the lowest level select ribeye. So it's better to eat the cheapest ribeye than it is to eat the most expensive sirloin if that makes sense and another thing is eggs eggs are a huge thing i eat tons of eggs and probably i'm trying to think i put an egg in my coffee in the morning so i can link to a video of bulletproof coffee it shows you the coffee that i make every morning with egg in it with mct oil a little pat of butter and you know, some flavorings to flavor it up a little bit, heavy cream, and it's very delicious. And when I drink that in the morning, I mean, I'm not hungry until the afternoon. It could usually take me almost the whole day. And then the other meal I eat will be just like a ribeye or a New York strip, and the, the, or a burger with bacon and eggs and some cheese on it. Cheddar cheese is good. Uh, just look at the cheeses. Some cheeses have carbs. You want cheeses that have like zero carbs or it'll, it'll say like less than one. They're like, might have trace amounts of carbs in there, but you don't really eat, want to eat like a whole pound block of cheese. Like just having a couple slices on, on your burger, that's fine. But try not to overdo it with the dairy. And even though like milk is technically carnivore because it's an animal product, animal and animal products is encompasses all of carnivore. So cheese is carnivore because it comes from milk, which comes from a cow, it's an animal product. But milk itself has a lot of lactose in it, so it's got carbs. So I try to avoid milk altogether. You can use heavy cream, which has, I think almost, I think it has zero carbs in it. And it's just all that lactose is taken out of it and you just have the, the, the fattiest part of the milk, which is still good for you. And some places don't have heavy cream, I found, and half and half would be better than using milk, 
which is half heavy cream and half milk. And they usually, it's usually pretty low in carbs because they must do some processing to take some of the lactose out for the half and half milk. So that's pretty good. Parmesan cheese, I like sprinkling that on my eggs. That's good. And uh, what else? That's the primary thing. Bacon, eggs, steak, ground beef. So that's the basic idea. I didn't want to make this video too long. I could talk about this forever. <laughs> I've definitely done a lot of research and like people had asked about my, my blood work, all my, my doctor, when I told him that I was going to do this diet, thought that my cholesterol was going to go through the roof. And after only doing it for, I don't know, six, eight weeks, my cholesterol levels had almost gone in half. My triglycerides almost went in half. My blood sugar went from like, 120, 130 to 90, like all my biomarkers got drastically better. And eventually once I reach my goal weight, I'm going to go back and do another calcium score where they do a, a CT scan of your, of your heart arteries. And I had a score of two, which is not a really bad score, but at my age, I shouldn't have any score at all. So I'm hoping that after doing the carnivore diet for a year that I will be able to reverse my current uh, calcium score of two and try to get it to zero. And if I could do that, I'm really going to rub it in the face of the doctors that said that this was just going to send my cholesterol through the roof and I was going to have a heart attack because I'm finding that the opposite is happening. Like I, li I listened to all their advice and took all their pills and did all that stuff for years and I was 350 pounds. And then they were recommending that a bariatric surgery where they wanted to cut two thirds of my stomach out. And, you know, they had all these extreme solutions. And I started doing some research on my own, came across Dr. Sean Baker and Dr. Ken Berry and followed their advice. And the results are night and day, you know, I've lost 90 pounds. Um, you know, I wouldn't even be a candidate for bariatric surgery right now because I'm not fat enough anymore for it. So, and, and that, those surgeries, there's a lot of risk involved. So definitely look into it because even after, if you have the surgery, yeah, you'll lose weight because you're forced to, your stomach's not big enough to be able to eat how much you ate before. But you can have a lot of problems with like nutritional deficiencies, not being able to to absorb enough nutrients where you have to supplement with them the rest of your life. There's there going to be other complications with infections and things. People have died from getting those surgeries. So they're not just a, you know, a small, a small risk. They're, they're a serious risk, but for anyone that doesn't want to try to change their diet and maybe try a diet like this to lose the weight by diet method. I mean, it might be worth the risk to get that surgery because if you keep going down the path that you're at where you're, you know, severely morbidly obese, that's going to kill you a lot sooner than probably the surgery will. I mean, you're kind of rolling the dice there because you don't know what will happen. Anything can happen is a high risk of surgery. So, you know, definitely look into the risk of that. But for me, I wanted to try changing my diet to avoid that surgery. And I'm so glad that I did. And feeling much better. I feel like I got a lot more energy. I actually want to get up and do stuff <laughs> rather than before. I just felt like tired and lethargic. So it's one of the best decisions I've made for myself, in my opinion. So thanks for watching this video. Uh, I'm sure there'll be other questions. I can make follow up videos in the future and, you know, show some of the other things that I eat. But that's all I got for now. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later. Take it easy.